Good day and welcome to episode 11 of Lab Talk. It is um, a lovely day here. I'm based in Toronto. My name is Angela Carnwright. I hope everybody's enjoying the summer. We had a small break since our episode 10 back in June. Uh, so I hope everybody's enjoying the summer and uh, of course, staying cool. And as it happens, staying cool and managing our cold storage is the topic of our lab talk today. So I will welcome our presenter today. Uh, her name is Kristen Walker. Kristen is a commercial manager here for North America with our laboratory of refrigerators and freezers. And uh, before that, she was a specialist in the field. So she has a lot of knowledge and a lot of experience with our cold storage. And she's going to share some of that with us today to help us manage uh, and maintain our refrigerators and freezers in our laboratories. Over to you, Kristen. Thanks. Great, thank you, Angela. Excited to be here today and talk about some care and maintenance for optimal performance of your laboratory refrigerators and freezers. We have some different topics to cover today and we wanna make sure that you know how to optimize uh, the equipment in your lab um, by properly caring for and maintaining your refrigerators and freezers. You can really optimize their performance and their longevity. So you can optimize energy usage, you can protect your samples, and you can protect your investment in the lab equipment by properly maintaining it. We will cover the best practices and what to avoid when installing and maintaining lab refrigerators and freezers. And there are likely actions you can take today and in the future to optimize your existing refrigerators and freezers, their performance, and new units that you purchase as well. We've got some best practices and recommendations. We also wanna show you these right in practice and we've got the immersive lab here as well so we can show you um, these uh, best practices in action. It's important to install these units on a level area with a minimum of six inch space on the sides and the rear of the unit and 12 inches on top. Going to the immersive lab, you can see there, we're checking to make sure that Dr. Roberts has the proper space between the units and of course above as well. And it looks like actually there's a box on top of the refrigerator which impedes the clearance on the top. So we wanna remove that. Inside the refrigerator, we wanna distribute the stored product as evenly as possible. And you want to load the product below the load line. You wanna ensure there's space between the products and between the product and the walls of the unit. I think we're going to get a close up of the load line to show you that uh, it's a line inside the refrigerator and freezers that you can see called out so that you know where to load it. That's perfect. Thanks for showing that. So that's how you know where to the top line of your loading for your product. And you can see there it's nice and evenly spaced to allow for airflow. It's also important to run remote monitoring wires and sensors through the access port located in the back of the units and not through the door gasket that way so that you're not running through the door gasket, allowing some warm air in the units. You also want to check the door gaskets regularly and replace if needed. We'll show that next. Awesome, there's that port in the back of the unit and that's where you wanna run the sensor through the port on those units. We can scan up here and show you the filter on the back of the unit as well. So the condenser filter protects the condenser and it's located on the back of the unit at the top right side there. And you can see that's partially pulled out because that's how you pull it out there, clean it, and then replace it afterwards. And we recommend uh, cleaning that every three months. With a door gasket, you wanna check that. And then you also wanna defrost freezers if there's frost buildup of a half an inch or more. So we can take a look at our freezer there and check out how much frost is there and see if it's gonna need a defrost soon. So a ULT freezer is a manual defrost freezer, similar to minus 20 freezers. So they do requ require um, a periodic defrost whenever that frost gets to a half inch or more built up on the walls. And this is different than refrigerators and auto defrost freezers that defrost on their own. So it's good to see the freezer and honestly that frost looks great, doesn't look like it needs a defrost anytime soon. So the space between the units looks really good. That box that was on the top has been removed so they have nice clearance between and above the units. The product inside is distributed evenly, which is perfect. Those wires are running through the, the ports and not the gaskets. And the gaskets look like they're in good shape. We should actually look at one of the gaskets if we can on that minus 30 freezer there. 
You periodically want to inspect the gaskets and make sure that they don't have any frost built up, that they're not torn. Um, and you can see there, they're nice and clean. There's no tears or anything like that there. So that's good to inspect from time to time and wipe with a soft cloth. Perfect. So now you've seen some of the care and maintenance really first thing in the lab there in the immersive lab. And we'll go also kind of summarize these different practices that you can do. Um, a little TLC for your refrigerators and freezers can go a long way to optimize their performance. It's important to have a plan to install new equipment with proper room for air circulation around each refrigerator and freezer. And it's also good to have maybe a captain in the lab that's in charge of the care and maintenance and making sure that the units are installed on a level surface, make sure they're defrosted regularly, that they inspect the gaskets on those units. Follow the best practices, distribute the product inside evenly and under the load line and within the boundary of each shelf. Check the gaskets often and wipe with a soft cloth. Defrost, manual defrost freezers as needed and replace gaskets if, if they are torn. And if you use a solid door refrigerator or freezer, um, consider posting a map on the outside for the contents to keep it organized. That way you minimize the door openings and you keep frost to a minimum. That's not a bad idea for even glass door units as well to keep a map. That way you stay more organized and reduce the time when you're putting things back as well into the refrigerators. Awesome. Thanks, Kristen. What a great presentation. And thank you to the lab for your help in uh, showing, showing us what Kristen was telling us. It's really helpful to have that demonstration. Uh, we have a whole team of experts, as it, as it turns out, here at Thermo Fisher. So in addition to Kristen, we have local support people that can help you either find the right solution or help you with your existing through our service programs. Uh, we have some resources up here on the presentation window um, that you can either scan right now and have a look at some of our product codes and some of our, um, our offerings through our cold storage experiences. So we're going a little bit more immersive with some of our tools here. But we also have some great video content that can help you um, with uh, choosing the right products, helping you with care and maintenance. So I want to thank Kristen today for walking through these steps for us. Um, please reach out if you have any questions. And, um, you know, I look forward to next week's lab talk with